the Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View. Good Sunday morning to you and welcome into Capital View. I'm Mallory Brooks. Over the years, Arkansas voters have changed the way of life in the natural state. Votes allowed medical marijuana sales and casinos to be built, but across the nation, lawmakers are making it harder to put initiatives on the ballot. Joining us this morning to talk about some of those restrictions is Andrew Jamillo from the Associated Press. And Andrew, you um, wrote a pretty comprehensive article on this this week. You've been studying this for some time. Can you explain exactly what these legislative proposals would do. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, this is something we're seeing not just in Arkansas, but we're mm -hmm. seeing it as seen across the country, uh, particularly in Republican states where you're seeing uh, progressive measures uh, get on the ballot and get approved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here in Arkansas, we had two, dif uh, two different things happen here. We had legislation that was enacted this year that uh, changes the way uh, the wording of uh, ballot measures uh, is approved. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, you have the, uh, uh, the ballot measures reviewed at the same time the signatures that are, tur uh, that are turned in are at the same time. And uh, that's raised concerns among some advocates who say that you could put these campaigns in a position where they've spent you know, you know, thousands, maybe even millions of dollars gathering signatures only to find out that uh, there's a problem with their proposal and it's not going to get on the ballot. Uh, and there's also a uh, ballot measure, about, uh, ironically enough, a ballot measure that legislature has put before voters next year that would impose even more restrictions. Wow. Yeah. So what exactly is the justification for these proposals then from legislators? The, the justification or the argument in favor of it is that uh, the concern that there is too easy of a process for, uh, for getting on the ballot and that it's made Arkansas an easy target for, especially for out-of-state uh, out groups uh, that are trying to get initiatives before voters. You know, examples that have been used have been in past years unsuccessful attempts to try to get initiatives on the ballot uh, with uh, with casinos. Before the most mm -hmm. recent one, uh, you know, in past years there had been efforts that essentially would have written monopolies into the Constitution, um, and also just the number of times that the Constitution has been changed in recent years. Uh, you know, I think it's been you know, uh, you know 20 times over the past several elections. Uh, of course, that also includes proposals that legislators have sent to voters. Uh, but mm -hmm. the concern is that when you're changing the Constitution that much, you're essentially legislating uh, mm -hmm. and the concern that it's uh, the Constitution should be a more you know, a static document than that. And, you know, let's talk the broad impact. We have seen this in other states. What are some of the impacts that you've seen in the states that they've had impacts in? Yeah, the uh, Ballot Initiative Strategy Center, which tracks this issue, says that uh, so far this year there have been, uh, yeah, I think, 120 uh, proposals that would weaken the initiative process in 16 states. And uh, you know, like, as I said before, it's we're seeing this in in you know conservative states mm -hmm. where progressive measures have passed. Uh, most recently, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Republican governor there had signed in, in, into law some some restrictions dealing with signature gathers. Uh, and Florida is a state where we've seen some very very progressive uh, issues get on the ballot and get approved uh, and uh, still uh, seeing those issues happen. Utah is another example where Utah voters had approved me Medicaid expansion mm -hmm. on the ballot. Uh, there, w there was a law enacted this year that would allow delaying the implementation of, ba of ballot measures after they've been approved. Some of those in Florida have made national headlines. Talk about some of those ballot measures. Yeah, so some of those they, they include uh, you know the most uh, the the uh, one that's probably gotten the most attention is one that gives uh, felons uh, felons the right uh, the right to vote, mm -hmm. uh, and that you know that's something that there has been been a lot of foc uh, focus on, and there are even more proposals that they're trying to get on on the ballot in in Florida next year. And you reported citizens are considering proposing a ballot initiative to oppose these legislative proposals. What is the status of that at this point? Uh, we. We have, we have not seen anything for, formal yet with us, but I know some of the opponents uh, of, uh, of these restrictions here, that's something that they've talked about, is putting something forward that would prevent these restrictions mm -hmm. and may, you know, maybe even include some other changes to the initiative process that would not be viewed as weakening the process. Uh, you know, another possibility that's being talked about by uh, groups that are really concerned about these restrictions is, is a lawsuit to challenge them. Mm -hmm. What are other re reactions you've seen from lawmakers, from the community with this? Uh, you yeah, know, we're hearing, uh, especially from uh, can uh, groups that have gotten measures on the ballot or are trying to get proposals on the ballot, 
uh, really concerned that this undermines the whole idea of the initiative process mm -hmm. and that for many groups it would make it nearly impossible to uh, to get proposals on the ballot. You have some of the restrictions that uh, uh, will be on the ballot next year include uh, getting rid of the 30-day cure period uh, that uh, campaigns are given to gather in additional uh, signatures if they fall short. Uh, it also would uh, you know, uh, move up the deadline by by several months. Uh, the uh, the deadline for turning in uh, petitions. Mm -hmm. The concern there is you're creating a much shorter window, and the big part of the concern is too what this does for smaller campaigns, kind of grassroots mm -hmm. ca campaigns that don't have uh, have as much money. Very interesting. You've been covering this for some time. Um, quite a complicated issue. If someone at home is watching, they don't follow politics a lot, and they say, what does this mean for me at the end of the day? What would you say? Well, what, is, what this means is, especially for people who have supported some of these ballot measures in the mm -hmm. past, you know, Arkansas has passed some pretty progressive measures, like mm -hmm. like you mentioned, medical marijuana uh, being one of them. Uh, has incre Arkansas has increased the minimum wage twice over the past several years, uh, legalized casinos. Uh, the What it means for uh, people is that folks who support this, in the future it may be more difficult um, and possibly you know, even impossible for some groups to get proposals like this on the ballot. Mm -hmm. The flip side is that if you're worried that too many of these proposals are getting on the ballot, this mm -hmm. may be kind of the, the speed bump to that. Something certainly to keep our eye on um, as we head into another session eventually. Anything else uh, people need to know about this, you think? Uh, you know, it's something we're, we're definitely still uh, still, uh, still watching, and it's definitely uh, something that we're probably going to see uh, see more of, especially as you see more of these ballot measures uh, mm -hmm. coming up in states, especially in Republican states. Absolutely. Something we'll keep our eye on, especially after such a big year that we had. My goodness, you yeah. know, we blink and all of a sudden medical marijuana, casinos. It has been a big year in Arkansas politics, or several years. I know it was years in the making for some of these. Oh, definitely. Andrew DeMillo from the Associated Press, thank you so much for joining us this thank Sunday you. on Capitol View. And coming up after a quick break, a group is hoping voters will help change a law signed by the governor that allows optometrists to perform simple procedures. This morning, we let both sides of the issue voice their opinions. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Instead of going to school every morning, what if school could come to you? Because learning happens anywhere and everywhere. K-12 powered schools provide a tuition-free, full-time, online public school education. It's public school at home. Visit k12.com to learn more. My students are ready to accept the challenge, and they get all the attention that they deserve. Students benefit from personalized support from state licensed teachers. That to me is like a huge support for me. Honestly, she's just happier. I can have more time with my family and do gymnastics. K-12's curriculum is designed to engage students, to challenge them, and it's tuition free. It's been a huge change in her life and ours. So visit k12.com today and join the over 1 million K-12 students who have chosen public school at home. Tuition free in Arkansas. My feet hurt so bad in the morning, I couldn't even put my feet on the floor. So I had to start engineering my own art support. So I got that, then I put this in there, this one. Finally, before I added another one of these in, I went to Good Feet, and they gave me this. So I built all this together to engineer a solution to my pain. And if I'd have just gone to Good Feet, I'd have been better off in the first place. Good Feet Art Supports. Engineered for pain relief. Personally fitted for you. Come and enjoy a new experience in shopping for your home. At Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor, we have over 5,000 rugs in the latest colors and styles. Bring your pillows, your pillow shams, and sizes. We will help you select the perfect rug. We're number one in customer service with 15,000 square feet of rugs, unique home decor, wallpaper, and flooring. Remember, buy today, take it home today, and save. Why wait? Watching Capitol View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas.
Well, welcome back to Capital View. It's been a hot topic. Earlier this month, a group submitted a proposed referendum aimed at overturning a new Arkansas law allowing optometrists to perform a broader range of procedures. Act 579, set to go into effect on July 24th, allows optometrists to administer injections around the eye, remove bumps and lesions from eyelids, and perform certain types of laser surgery now performed by ophthalmologists. Procedures optometrists say they learn how to do in school. Safe Surgery Arkansas submitted the proposal and here to talk about the efforts to change that law is Dr. Tracy Baltz. Thank you for joining us this morning on Capitol View. Thank you, Mallory. Well, first of all, talk about um, why you think this is important, why you've been collecting the signatures and why you think optometrists shouldn't be performing these procedures. Well, we think this is about patient safety. Mm -hmm. We think this is about patient's vision. Um, we think it's kind of a prerequisite, or it is a prerequisite, to go to medical school and get ophthalmology residency training uh, to be able to do these surgeries that are on or around the eye. And we've heard, when we've heard about this, we've heard minimal procedures. Um, are these minimal? What, what will be performed in these procedures? Well, Mallory, back when we were in medical school, a minimal procedure was something I did on you. Mm -hmm. And if it was done on me, it was a major procedure. Mm -hmm. But all of these procedures, which are being downplayed, are vision-threatening procedures. They are procedures that risk a patient's vision. Even taking a lesion off an eyelid has some risk to the eye. Again, we feel this is about patient safety and it, surgery should only be formed by medical doctors who've had that extensive training of medical school and ophthalmology residency. This was a heated debate at the Capitol. It went on for some time. Yes. After the measure was passed, what ha have you been doing? Kind of talk about what you've been doing gathering signatures for the past few months. Well, in the past few months, we've debated on how to proceed. Mm -hmm. And then in the last two weeks, this referendum process has come up. And now we're trying to gather enough signatures to uh, bring this to a vote of the people, to uh, get it and put the law in front of the people and see if this is what truly the people of Arkansas want. And we really think when the facts come out that the people of Arkansas are going to want an ophthalmologist operating on their eye, somebody who has that extensive training and not somebody uh, who has a lesser uh, training. So do you expect to get all those signatures? What do you expect to happen next? We think over the next few weeks, yes, uh, the signatures will be there. Um, there are people right now across the state of Arkansas trying to collect these signatures. And um, we believe that the people, when they hear the facts, when they get the chance to respond to this, they're going to respond favorably to us. All of the ophthalmologists that I have talked to in the last month or two, we've all had patients coming in saying, now what is it with this new law? Should we be concerned? Um, and so we've had a lot of feedback from patients and we feel like we're on the right track or doing the right thing. And for those who aren't familiar, kind of talk about the differentiation between an optometrist and ophthalmologist when it comes to training. Well, I think there's a dramatic difference. Um, as an ophthalmologist, I've spent four years in medical school and I've spent four years in an ophthalmology residency. Um, countless patient hours. Um, optometrists have gone into four years of an optometry school they had to pick up the general medicine part of eyes in that optometry school. I got all that in medical school. And then in my last year of medical school, I got a lot of ophthalmology. And then in those four years of residency, I think, uh, you know, probably thousands and thousands of patient contact hours every year, um, which is dramatically more than what an optometrist does in their training. So the training is, is just, way apart, way apart. I don't know how to explain it a lot better than that, but it's, it's dramatically different. You know, we have seen this in other states, some of our surrounding states, other states have been passion, passing measures where um, optometrists are performing these procedures. Why do you think that? And do you expect more states to pass it? Is that possible? I think it's optometry's position to try to pass this in more states, but it's only three states that allow this. Mm -hmm. That means 47 states currently don't think this is a good idea. So only three states allow this. And recently, um, to what I've been told, this similar legislation has been tried in a few other states and it's failed. It's mm -hmm. failed this year in a state and it failed last year in a state or two. So the legislation is controversial. Um, and I think over time, we just need to really get the facts out and, you know, who do we want 
operating on our eyes. Mm -hmm. Somebody with medical school and ophthalmology residency or somebody who's, who's been to optometry school. And before we go this morning, can you explain one more time some of these procedures, um, we talked about laser surgery at one point. This isn't l the LASIK surgery we talk about. This is um, no, so, not, not LASIK surgery, no, but what are the procedures, again, that would be operated? Well, or there's procedure? a lot of procedures, too many to, to name okay. uh, today in front of us. Um, the optometrists have talked about this as only four procedures, like removing small bumps from eyelids, mm -hmm. um, injecting anesthetic, um, doing a laser treatment that's after cataract surgery to clear up a membrane and doing a glaucoma laser treatment. Um, but this law opens it up to a whole lot of other things, um, injections, stuff like Botox mm -hmm. and fillers, um, removing lesions from the surface of the eye could be done the way I read this legislation. So yes, it's not LASIK, it's not cataract surgery, but it's a number of very significant procedures that would be opened up and again, while the current optometrists are saying it is just these four, um, when you read the law, another optometrist could very well say, well, I can do this and this, and the law would allow that. So keeping it broad at this point is one of the problems that you have with the legislation. Definitely that's a problem with it, but the procedures that I named, the four specific mm -hmm. ones that I named, are still all vision-threatening procedures and should only be done by an ophthalmologist, in my opinion. Well, Dr. Tracy Baltz, thank you so much for joining us and weighing in on a very important issue. We appreciate you for joining thank us. You. Thank you for having me. This Sunday on Capitol View. Thank you again. When we come back, the other side of the issue joins us in studio. Hear from a representative on why it's important for her to optometrist to keep Act 579. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. This battery-powered robot keeps your grass like a carpet. Introducing Husqvarna Automower for a perfect lawn 24-7. Get your Husqvarna Automower today at Triple C Sales and Service in Conway. Have you ever wanted a brand new camper? Hi, I'm Misty Gibson for John Gibson Auto Sales, and we are an official Gulfstream camper dealer. Whether you have good credit, bad credit, or no credit, we will finance your brand new Gulfstream camper. We also have a large selection of used campers, cars, trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, ATVs, performance trailers, and boats. Check us out online at johngibsonautosales.com and we will have your purchase ready when you get here. Hey y'all, it's with a grateful heart that we want to welcome you to Down South. It's been a dream of my mother and I to create a space where you can come as you are and feel at home. But leave inspired, confident, and empowered to go home and try something new. Take time out of your day and come and visit us. You'll find unique Southern-inspired furnishings and gifts with a farmhouse, southwestern, rustic chic kind of vibe. We can't wait to see y'all down south in El Paso. The Arkansas Scholarship Lottery isn't just making winners today. We're making them for life. With more than half a million life-changing scholarships now awarded, we're helping today's students become tomorrow's leaders. Like Cole, who's earning a degree in psychology from UA Fayetteville. Mary, who's attending UCA to study nursing. And Spencer, who's dreaming of teaching high school social studies with a degree from Arkansas Tech. Apply now at scholarships.adhe.edu. Having dental pain, you need to call the professionals at DDS Dentures and Implant Solutions. Right now, get implants starting at only $995. Call to make your appointment today. Go show the world your beautiful smile. Get more. Buy the foot long of the day and get two sides free. Choose from chips, cookies, or a 20 ounce drink free with the foot long of the day. Make it what you want. Make sure you're geared up for spring with the all-powerful, professionally designed zero-turn mower by Gravely. Mow the distance with 0% interest available and no money down. Get your Gravely today at Triple C Sales and Service in Conway. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. Before the break, we talked to Dr. Tracy Baltz, an ophthalmologist and part of a group fighting Act 579. It would allow optometrists to perform five minimally invasive procedures that are typically done in office using a laser 
and or a scalpel. Joining us now on the other side of the issue is Amanda Story, representing Arkansans for Healthy Eyes. Thank you for joining us today, Amanda. Thanks for having me, Mallory. I appreciate it. Well, this was a heated topic at the Capitol during the session over the past few months. You were there for a lot of it. Talk about what happened. Well, Mallory, you're right. Um, this was probably one of the most debated bills that we saw at this past session. Legislators spent literally weeks and hours um, of study and testimony hearing both sides of this issue. And in the end, Act 579 passed overwhelmingly in both the House and the Senate. Um, it, you know, legislators decided that it is in the best interest of Arkansans and Arkansas patients to have better access to quality eye care, which is really what Act 579 is all about. And uh, for someone who's not familiar, talk about exactly what optometrists would be doing, some of these procedures that they would be performing. Sure, and just for a little bit of background, before Act 579 passed, the scope of practice law in Arkansas, which governs what optometrists here um, physicians, optometric physicians are able to do, had not been updated in more than 20 years. Oh, wow. um, and so as you can imagine, there have been a lot of advances in technology, education has changed a lot in two decades. And so while um, that all changed, our um, optometric physicians are still practicing under an outdated law. So Act 579 broadened that scope um, to bring it up to date. It allows them to perform, as you said, five minimally invasive um, procedures that are done in an office in their chair in an optometrist's chair um, without the need for any anesthesia mm -hmm. and so um, these are routine again routine procedures and there's some confusion there's some misinformation um, out there uh, we're not talking about you know a LASIK surgery mm -hmm. or cataract surgery there's certain things that mm -hmm. optometrists will always refer a patient to a specialist to have mm -hmm. these again are just minimally invasive um, procedures that treat conditions optometrists are already treating and procedures they're qualified to perform and they're trained to do these procedures Right now in optometry schools all across the country, optometrists are learning how to do these um, procedures. And in fact, in a lot of other states, they're allowed to do this under law. So what's happening is our Arkansas students are going to optometry school, they're um, being educated to do this, and then they're returning home to Arkansas and they're not allowed to practice to the full scope of their education. So it's frustrating to them. They feel like they're not allowed to provide patients um, with the full scope of care that their patients deserve. Well, and speaking of, you know, if they're coming back here to Arkansas, what is the policy in surrounding states concerning um, concerning optometrists being able to perform these procedures? Well, um, big picture of around 18 states um, have. Uh, scopes of practice broader than what Arkansas had before Act 579. And when you're looking at these specific procedures, several states um, allow exactly what Act 579 does, including some of our neighbors. In Oklahoma, they've been doing these procedures successfully for more than 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, they perform these procedures in Louisiana where they've done them for years. They've done them for quite a while in um, Kentucky, for example. So this is not plowing new ground for Arkansas. This is really just keeping us up to speed and, and making sure that Arkansas patients, especially some of, in some of our rural areas mm -hmm. have um, the same access to care that folks in other states do. And it's important to keep in mind also um, that optometrists practice in more than 80% of Arkansas counties, um, whereas ophthalmologists, the specialists, mm -hmm. are in only about 30% of counties. So it really is an issue of access to care. A lot of times you have um, a patient who may see an optometrist for a procedure and then have to be referred to a specialist. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if they're in a rural area, that might I mean they drive farther, they wait longer for to get the appointment, and then they wind up paying more um, for a procedure that they should be able to get in their optometrist's office. And so we saw this pushback at the Capitol from some groups and op some ophthalmologists. Why do you think you're seeing this pushback even now with this um, petition out them trying to get signatures to appeal it? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, scope of practice, and Mallory, I know you've been at the Capitol, scope of practice issues um, for healthcare professions, they're always really heavily debated at the Capitol, whether it's optometry or other health professions. Um, it's always something that gets a lot of pushback. The last time the Optometry Act was changed, like I mentioned, more than 20 years ago, it was for different procedures. There was the same debate, mm -hmm. same pushback. So I think that's just, you know, folks are slow to change. Um, we're seeing a lot of the, that same, same issue here. And like you said, it did pass overwhelmingly at the Capitol. 
Do you expect um, these groups to get these signatures? Do you expect um, to see any change at this point? You know, it's hard to say. This is, um, this is a unique process. We haven't seen a referendum tried in Arkansas um, since the early 90s. Wow. So this is something under our Constitution that's not done very often. Um, we here, we know there are a lot of canvassers out there gathering signatures. Um, you know, there may be some misinformation floating around out there, mm -hmm. which is something we feel we want voters to understand and really know the facts behind 579 before they before they sign a petition so it's it's hard to say you know I think it's a little early to to call it to, to determine whether or not those signatures will be collected but it's our hope mm -hmm. um, regardless of what happens is that um, voters will will be able to really know the facts um, it kind of put some of the misinformation uh, floating around out there aside and understand that act 579 truly is um, put in place and was put in place to allow Arkansas patients more access to quality eye care and um, to eye care that their, optom their optometric physicians are qualified to provide. Amanda Story, thank you so much with Arkansas, Arkansans for Healthy Eyes. We appreciate you so much thank for joining you. us on Capitol View on this mm -hmm. Sunday morning. We are back to wrap it up after this. You are watching Capitol View on this Sunday morning. Stick around. New ice cream cookie sandwiches from Sonic. Delicious cookies and real ice cream are on a summer reunion tour. They taste so good live. Hurry in for Sonic Nights. New 149 ice cream cookie sandwiches and half price shakes after eight. Last season, I tore my ACL. Angela is in a lot of pain. I refuse to let the injury defeat me. Songland, the Jonas Brothers made a song that hit number one on iTunes. And Tuesday, Aloe Black chooses a song to appear in the upcoming blockbuster film, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> Songland, new Tuesday on NBC and stream anytime. Man, these Red Bull slushes are invigorating, right? I know it, man. I'm feeling confident, feeling pumped. I want to jump this thing. I don't know if that's such a good idea, TJ. No, man, I need help. Can we jump this thing? Oh, yeah, of course. Rush in for Sonic's new Red Bull slushes. Half price during happy hour. You're watching Capitol View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Let's take a look at other top political headlines across the state and nation this week, starting with former state Senator Jeremy Hutchinson could spend time in federal prison. Last Tuesday, he pleaded guilty to bribery and tax fraud charges. A new judge has been named to handle the case surrounding the killing of a former Arkansas lawmaker, Linda Collins, who was found dead outside her home. Supreme Court Chief Justice Dan Kemp on Thursday named retired circuit judge David Goodson to preside over the case. New judge named to handle Arkansas ex-lawmaker death case. The governor creates a task force that will repair the levees and review the system, also developing defunct levee boards in Arkansas. And Democrats and Republicans going head-to-head -head on the baseball field. The two parties competed in the 57th Congressional Baseball Game at Nationals Park. Always a big tradition. Also, the 20 Democratic presidential candidates battling out on the debate stage in Miami over two nights, each trying to prove why they are the best choice to go up against President Trump in 2020. While President Trump visited with world leaders in Japan for the G20 summit, talking about a wide range of themes, including economic growth, trade, and climate change. And that is it for today's show. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us. Don't forget, you can always take Capital View on the go. Download the Capital View podcast wherever you get your podcast. We're back with an all-new Capital View next week. Meet the Press is next. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.